Well, uh, my name is Laura Seifert. I am an instructor of anthropology at Armstrong State University. And we are doing an archaeological project on the Benedictine Monastery and Freedman School on Skidaway Island in, outside of Savannah, Georgia. And we're doing this project because part of the site is going to be developed. Someone's going to build a house on it. Um, and so we've just done historical research. And we've gone out and done a survey trying to figure out where some of the archaeological resources are. And now we're starting to dig more intensively into some of the areas we think might be buildings. And we've got some of the, some of the artifacts out here. Um, these are, let's see, pull out. These are some of our cooler things. So this is an area where we suspect that the church and the monastery is. We have this spoon. This was found relatively close to the surface. But this is, this is kind of cool because this was found by some of the Benedictine military school students, and they were super excited. This is, this is one of the cooler things that we found, too. And, and the, the boys at Benedictine military school found this as well. It's a Native American projectile point, what we might call an arrowhead, but it's got tabby on it. And so what we suspect happened is this was made by a Native American. Um, you can see it's really detailed. You can, you can see the, the ridges on the edge. It's serrated, like a serrated knife. Um, it broke at some point, and it was thrown into the trash. And then when the monks went to make tabby, what oftentimes what happened was they would go into the Native American um, shell middens, and they'd pull up old shells and use that as part of the base for their sand and shell and lime mortar. And you know that little bit of tabby stuck on there as a clue as to the very long involved history of this of this object. So that's probably one of everyone's favorite artifact because it seems to really you know it's it's rare that we get an artifact that tells such a story like that. Let's see, this is a bottle base. This one's not too too old. These actually these fit together. Boom! There you go. And then there's there's more pieces of it in here as well. Mm -hmm. And also lots of lots of window glass. I mean, we know from the pictures that there's lots of windows in these buildings. And oh my goodness, are we finding lots of window glass at all? All sort of fits with this. So uh, this is found in the same area um, where we think the building is. This is a little obviously it's not washed yet, but it's it's a little pot. And see where the handle would have attached. Mm -hmm. Could have been for cooking or anything like that. But it seems to be a pretty, um, probably like a aluminum tin plated metal. This we're gonna need to look into doing some conservation because it, you know, if we let this go for years, it'll it'll continue to deteriorate. So that's one of our more more fun individual objects. You can really see people using these things instead of just tiny little fragments of whatever. Um, and we also get lots of oyster shell. Mm -hmm. um, they were no doubt eating oysters, um, but also putting them into tabby. So I saw, oh, here we go. This is a little little medicine bottle. And we I even found a couple of pieces of, of medicine bottle um, that said Solomon's on them for Solomon's Drugstore, mm -hmm. um, which is a local Savannah brand where they were mixing their own medicines and selling them. Um, and also has this is animal bone mm -hmm. and you can see this end is pretty you can see how it's been butchered I mean this end's a little bit more ragged this is a rib um, but they've chopped at that and and no doubt um, stuff that they were eating as well mm -hmm. and then one of the other uh, interesting these bigger bags have big pieces of which it's pretty delicate but I'll let you get in here um, this is big pieces of sheet metal. We think it may be roofing. Mm. And so each one of these bigger bags has these, these big pieces of um, you know, fairly, fairly big heavy pieces of, of metal. Um, we do uh, usually weekends. I take my students out. It's just I'm, I'm the whole archaeology department. Um, so I take students out on weekends mostly and we dig, you know, have them come in the morning or the afternoon. Um, so we've really only put in I'd have to check, maybe 
six, eight days of, of work out there for this semester. Um, and we've dug or started four one by two meter test units, about three feet by six feet. Um, we've dug two entirely, and then we have two that we've dug um, quite a bit on, but not entirely. So it's, um, it's slow work. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. The students get very, very excited when they find stuff, which this is a great site for, for finding stuff, too. Just more of that metal in. So is there a cooperative course or something you do with uh, Benedictine College, UC? Um, no, <laughs> it's, it's, this is very Savannah. So one of my students, <laughs> it's, it's all about who you know, one of my students' moms is a teacher at BC. And so uh, each of the students in my archaeology class had to do some sort of public outreach project because they're taking a public archaeology class. So uh, what Ethan decided to do was reach out to, to the students at BC, um, uh, you know, identify a few students who were particularly interested in history, and then invite them out um, to, to, to learn more about the site and then to come out and actually do some archaeology. So we had four students come out and spend an afternoon with us. And they're the, they're the ones that found these artifacts with the spoon and all the, uh, the bottle glass and the button. And so they, they, they picked a good spot. They really, <laughs> they really enjoyed it. You can see how this really looks like a plank, too. But you can see how this has, looks like it's got some paint on it. Mm. Now, it's probably not the original color that you're really seeing because of its faded and changed over, over time. But we've got this sort of same color. Um, and even one that's a little bluer, I'm not sure where that is because we're in the process of getting all the artifacts um, washed up now. I have a research assistant who's, who's doing that, who's washing the Did artifacts. Did you say that's uh, the clapboard on the outside? It could, it could be. Mm -hmm. We also have some pieces that seem very thin um, that certainly would not be on an outside of a building. They could be um, pieces of wood that go between glass panes. Mm. Um, they could be lathing on the inside of the building, so the lathing being the thin um, wooden boards that you then plaster over top of, because um, we are finding um, a significant amount of what seems to be plaster as well. So I wanted to pull this out to show you some of, so this is more of that, that sheet metal that's probably tiny pieces of roof. Um, but then more nails. This one has a bunch of screws in it, too. So these are, um, and these are definitely, um, actually, that's quite old. Um, you see how it's kind of squared off? Mm -hmm. So that tells me this is not, um, it's only partially machine made. It's got a very square nail head on it. That tells me that's monastery era. That's not, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, your modern nails, which are round wire mm -hmm. nails, which everybody recognizes today. This is a much older nail. Um, and this is level two down, so you're getting into some older stuff. Yes, so this is, this is, well, this is everything that we've dug this past semester in the, in the fall of 2016. I have another box, basically a box that like reams of paper come in, and that's from the spring of 2016. Earlier in the year, we did what's called a survey. So we went out and we dug 25 shovel test pits, which is basically just a take a shovel, dig straight down, what are you finding? Are you finding any artifacts at all? Are you finding, um, you know, different soils that indicate that people were living there? Are you finding features like um, trash pits or post holes where people were putting a building in? Things like that. Um, every hole we dug, we found artifacts, every single one. <laughs> so then it was a matter of, okay, what artifacts are we finding where that then has pinpointed where we're going to dig? So there's also three. Um, pieces of architecture, so things like, uh, there's a big pile of just brick rubble and tabby. There's um, a brick pier that's not intact, but there's a couple brick piers on site. And the artifacts seem to cluster around those, so we think we have a couple of buildings. We also found, you know, I'm kind of showing you stuff that's related to the monastery, but um, going through the um, survey, we found Native American things. Um, even as we're getting deeper into the areas we're digging now, as we get deeper, we find, um, we found a couple uh, stone flakes. So as you chip away at stone to make an, make an arrowhead or a projectile point, as we call them, you know, the little bits and pieces of stone fly everywhere. And we found some of those. We found some Native American um, ceramics as well. Um, and then we also have stuff that's like colonial era, because there was a plantation on the site before the monastery. Um, we see ceramics and glass and stuff from that time frame. And then we have stuff that's, that's even later. Um, the students are fascinated by um, 
see if I can find it. They're fascinated by a um, top to a canning jar that, uh, I don't see it here. There's a top to a canning jar that uh, is, uh, has milk glass. It's like an old style of canning jar that none of them recognized. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of fun to introduce them to stuff that, you know, their parents and grandparents may recognize, but the students don't. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Coke bottles from the 1960s, that sort of thing. Um, there's also, also a lot of prohibition distilling going on on Skidaway Island, something like estimated 60 some sites of, of prohibition era illegal distilling. Mm -hmm. And we have some, some barrel straps that are laid out on the site too, so we could, we could even have that piece of history represented. So it's, there's several thousand years of history there. Um, we're interested in the monastery site because it is so rare. So there's, um, you know, every archaeology site is important, but um, because some are more rare and, and because things like the Friedman School, you know, we can get at history of people who, who didn't have a lot of literacy, who didn't leave a lot of historical documents. And that's why the monastery and the Friedman School are so important. I mean, there's only been one other Friedman School um, even I identified archaeologically or excavated at all in the United States, as far as, as, far as I know. Um, and I can't find any research into any uh, Benedictine sites in the United States that have been excavated archaeologically. So it's, you know, it's, we're keeping all the artifacts, we're interested in all the history, but we're sort of focused on this slice of history because, um, because of the rarity of this particular site. So it makes it kind of extra important. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a suggestion. Yeah, please do. If you hold it this way, mm -hmm. it could be the hook on a cope. You know what a cope is? No. It's a, a ceremonial cape worn by priests. Okay. And benediction and things like that. Oh, yeah? Okay, let me, and um, if, let me write this down. You get the other side. Let's see. This it is. latch on to this. Okay, let's see. I've got TU3 level 2. A co C O P E? C O P E, yeah. Okay. A cope. And it's. Cope. I would call it a latch. 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 And, and the so other this side is, would have um, a, an open, a round, a open. Similar to that, but this part would be round and open. So, so it would it would like have a, like a circle that yes. it would hook into. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So it would be like a hook and eye, but a yeah, bigger, yeah. bigger, fancier one. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That's yeah. the only thing I can think of because only because of the design. I mean. Uh huh. Yeah, it, it's clearly right. it's clearly fancy. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. It isn't just um. for uh, hanging the dishwasher, a dish towel. Yeah. The only other thought I had had is. Um, for like sometimes books had metal latches and, mm -hmm. and decoration on it. Um, so I'm, I'm on the lookout for anything education. So um, uh, he had put this aside because he was a little concerned about it. But this is, this was found almost all together and I have a feeling we'll be able to put it back together once we, hmm. so it goes, this is, um, this is more the bottom. And then this is the top. And we found it mostly, I mean, broken, sort of smashed in place. Ah, uh, you know what that is? Uh-huh, yeah, an oil lamp. It is a lamp, yeah. yeah. And so, and there's obviously more pieces of it here together. And my student was concerned because it's, um, it's all the patina on it is flaking off as the glass just kind of decays, and that's just from it being in the soil. But, um, yeah. One thing I thought was interesting about this is that I did find kind of a similar example online. It's very plain mm -hmm. cons compared to a lot of the others. And I wondered if that wasn't sort of a reflection of there being monks on site, is that they weren't interested or allowed, <laughs> one or the other or both, mm -hmm. in having you know, all these really fancy, elaborate Victorian era. You know, the Victorian era is sort of notorious for being over-decorated. And yet this one, compared to everything else, is really, really quite simple and plain. And I thought that, was, that may speak to the fact that there's monks here on site and not families trying to keep up with the Joneses, <laughs> essentially. So um, once we get this cleaned up, it's definitely, we've got other pieces that I think we'll, we'll kind of put it back together and we'll have a pretty good, pretty good look at what this thing looked like originally, which is pretty, pretty exciting. So this was another cool find. Let's see if I can get this back over here. So that Chase can wash it up. Well, and that's, that's pretty much what we have here. Um, a lot more, lot more work to do. <laughs> these are not heads of monks, by the way. <laughs> no, these are uh, our human evolution study. These are more just for decoration. Over here, we have um, casts of, of fossils that we use for teaching the students. And then, of course, the Bonaparte is our skeleton in the corner.